This is by far my most frequently asked question, oddly enough. It's apparently also what people google and how they end up finding me, since I did end up writing a blog post to answer that question a decade ago. Google sends out updates every month or so on how you're doing online, and still 10 years after I wrote that blog post, it's still one of my most visited pages. So, how do you make a Swedish bed? Turns out I have two beds to show you. Exhibit A is my own bed. It's 140 centimeters wide, which is the equivalent to an American double in width. Exhibit B is the exact same size, but a newer version. It's my son Villas. The only difference is that he has a double duvet and I have a single. His duvet was actually mine, but I felt too trapped in the volume of fabric, so I gave it to him and went back to my more spartan bedding. To be honest, a lot of it has to do with my two nightly companions. I get too hot at night with my Fila and family sharing the bed and bedding with me. Before remaking the bed to show you the different parts, I'm taking the opportunity to freshen things up. My mattress topper isn't washable, so once in a while I sprinkle bicarbonate over it, let it sit for at least 20 minutes and then vacuum it up. While I do that, my bedding is airing out outside and after the bicarbonate treatment, I also air the mattress topper by taking it off the bed and laying it over an armchair by the open window while the rest is being washed. So here's the naked bed, which has springs in it and the legs go straight into the wooden frame at the bottom. It's basically a mattress on legs. I believe it's called a foundation base. They're quite common here in Sweden, but don't seem to be in a lot of other countries. The closest option I could find is having a slatted mattress base with a spring mattress on top. I'm guessing Swedish beds seem simpler, more minimal than maybe American beds, and that's why there are so many questions about how we make our beds here in Sweden. I can't of course speak for all Swedes and their beds, only my own. Since I wrote that blog post 10 years ago, I think the more elaborate hotel-style beds have gained popularity over here, as well as the continental bed frames with box springs and stuff. But I'm sticking to the more basic way of making my bed. I don't have a headboard or footboard. I'm not against them, I just don't need one slash haven't found one that I like enough to get. It's not on my shopping list, but if all of a sudden I stumble on a great one, I might still get it. I prefer simplicity when my bed is concerned. It takes basically a minute to make it in the mornings. I like to cover the foundation base with the bed skirt to keep things from getting dirty. My cats jump straight into bed after having been outside, so I like as much as possible to be washable. This mattress topper goes on top of the foundation base and bed skirt. Mine is memory foam. To keep the mattress topper fresh, I pop a mattress protector on top. This one can go in the laundry machine, and I wash it maybe every third or fourth time I wash the sheets.
Then a sheet goes over the mattress topper and mattress protector. I use flat sheets, but it could also be a fitted sheet. As for pillows, I have two. I put pillow protectors over them before I put the pillowcases on. Again, I wash the pillow protectors every third or fourth wash of my bedding. I use a single duvet and over it a duvet cover. I like my bedding to be white, soft and 100% cotton. I've heard so much about the red count, the higher the better, but I recently discovered that it doesn't mean softer, so I opt for a lower thread count nowadays and make sure to really feel the fabric in store before buying bedding. Oh, someone also asked if I have a different setup in winter versus summer, and I don't. In winter I wear warmer PJs and sometimes get into bed with socks, but my bedding stays the same. I like a wool throughout the foot of the bed during the day because my cats love to get in under there. Also, my bedding serves as my voiceover recording studio, and the throw is essential as it goes over my head as I'm recording this. Okay, looking at this makes it seem like a Swedish bed is quite complicated. But normally when I change the sheets, I just change the flat sheet, the duvet cover and the pillowcases. Every third or fourth time I also wash the mattress and pillow protectors, like I said. I rarely wash the bed skirt, but I do wear out the pillows and duvet quite often, and maybe once a year I'll pop them in the washing machine too. And that's how to make a Swedish bed. And Svensk Singh.